Good morning students, hope you guys are doing well. Um, welcome to class on this wonderful Wednesday morning. Hope you're ready to learn some awesome geometry. I hope your test went well yesterday. Um, as you guys could tell, um, the tests are going to be thorough. Um, the definitions, postulates, corollaries, theorems, these are things you're just going to have to know. Okay? And I did not write Euclidean geometry. Uh, my last name is not Euclid. I had nothing to do with that, but it is what it is. And you guys are going to have to learn these things and be able to apply them mathematically. So I hope you did well. You know last year, for those that had me as a teacher, um, your tests were usually returned the next day. Um, but I will not be collecting paper uh, papers from you guys until Friday of each week. So your tests will not be back until Monday. And I will usually give Friday tests. And I'm going to try to be there this Friday in class. So... Uh, we'll kind of see how that goes, but I hope you all did well. Um, this Friday there will be a quiz. And by the way, while I'm rambling, why don't you go ahead and copy this heading down in your notes. Properties of Parallelograms, Lesson 6-2. Today's the 30th. And listen while you're doing that. There will be a quiz on Friday. On Thursday I will go over what's going to be on that quiz. And so quiz on Friday. Um, and you owe me Monday's homework. I gave you a homework assignment Monday, and I told you it was not due until Wednesday. And I asked Mr. Harmon to remind you of that yesterday, so hopefully he did that. So please turn your homework in at this time. Ashley and Kate, I had you guys last year. Enjoyed having you in class. I'm not trying to pick on you, but your incompletes are due by this Friday. And so I need you to work on that and get those done. Okay? So please get caught up. Have your incompletes turned in, and let's try not to get behind again this year. Okay, Chapter 6 is all about quadrilaterals. Okay? Chapter 6 is all about quadrilaterals. And <clears throat> we looked... I'm going to review for just a second. I would not worry about writing this down. Just watch. We looked um, at a theorem that said when you have a quadrilateral and you have these four angles, we'll call them angles 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you add up all four angles whenever you have a quadrilateral, what do you always get? 360 degrees. By the way, if it's a triangle and you add up all of these angles on the inside, what do you get when it's a triangle? Do you remember that? 180. Okay, and we learned that um, on Monday. We talked about that. So just a little quick review. Don't forget that. When you have the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral, they will always add up to 360. And then we looked at a three-sided figure. I'm just going to put a three-gone. That means a three-sided polygon. We call that a triangle. I'm going to be really sloppy. And you have to listen well. Um, we went over all this on Monday. A foregon is called a quadrilateral. A five-gon, remember what we have in Washington, D.C., the Pentagon? It's a five-sided five building. A uh, six-gon would be a hexagon. Seven-gon would be a heptagon. H-E-P-T-A. Heptagon, and then an eightgon would be an octagon. So that's just a quick review of what we looked at on Monday. <clears throat> and today we're going to get into a little more of a specific type of quadrilateral, and uh, that's going to be parallelogram. So if you've not copied this down, please do so quickly. Properties of parallelograms, uh, lesson 6.2, and today's date is the 30th. Okay, continuing on. This is a definition you will have to know on your, for your quiz on Monday. You will have to know this definition for your quiz on Monday, and here it is. A parallelogram, a parallelogram excuse me, is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. That's a parallelogram, okay? It is a quadrilateral, so we know right off the bat that it has to have four sides and these opposite sides are parallel. So you should know this already, but just to make sure. Here we go. Um, let me put some arrows on here. You should know by now that an arrow on this line and an arrow on this line means they're parallel. And then we'll put two arrows on this line. And I guess I could color them in. Doesn't really matter but there's a parallelogram. 
here's what you have to have to have a parallelogram and you take whatever notes you need to the main thing is have this in your notes right here this definition but first of all you have to have a what a quadrilateral that means the object must have four sides well this has four sides one two three four and then you have to have both pairs of opposite sides parallel well notice the side here is parallel to this side here and then notice this this side up here is parallel to this side here all right now um, this would not be a parallelogram you say well Mr. Earhart that top side right there is parallel to this side that's true but is this side here parallel to this side here and of course the answer is no and so a parallelogram must have both pairs of opposite sides parallel and it must be a quadrilateral okay that is a definition you will need to know for your quiz on this Friday what a parallelogram is all right now let's continue on to get into some more awesome fun notes okay copy this down we are going to look at this theorem okay you're responsible for this theorem it'll be on your quiz on Friday so absolutely no cheering um, and here it is theorem 62 states if you have a quadrilateral that's a parallelogram or if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram then its opposite sides are congruent you need to know that okay so if you have a quadrilateral that's a parallelogram then its opposite sides are congruent okay I'm a firm believer in pictures so I hope this will help you okay here is your parallelogram I would copy this down if I were you Wow there we go um, copy this in your notes please I'm gonna go ahead and very quickly um, put these arrows just boom 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 sound effects are for free boom boom okay there's my parallelogram now look if you have a parallelogram then what do you have opposite sides are congruent do you see that opposite sides are congruent. that means this length right here whatever length this side is it's going to be the exact same length as this side down here so in other words you could put a slash and a slash they're congruent you could put two slashes through this side and two slashes through this side because I'm telling you right now however long this side is whatever the length is length is it's identical to this side here so are you seeing the if and the then part if you have a what parallelogram then the opposite sides are always congruent you need to know that we're looking at one definition today and four theorems by the way I should have warned you I did not I apologize I am teaching a marathon today I am not teaching tomorrow tomorrow you'll walk in and work on homework the whole hour so I'm combining two lessons and giving you about 30 problems to work on tomorrow however you will see they are amazingly pre pretty easy and pretty quick to do and it will not be an unreasonable assignment um, so okay let's take a look at this all right um, hopefully you've copied this in your notes by now if you needed a diagram fine if you did not fine I do want this problem in your notes so would you please copy this into your notes okay now notice we do have a parallelogram how do you know that Mr. Earhart well I see an arrow here and an arrow here so I know these two sides are parallel I see two arrows here and two arrows here so I know these two sides are parallel and how many sides do I have all together four so I know I have a parallelogram okay so I have a parallelogram and the last theorem that I just learned said that opposite sides are congruent so I would like you in your notes to tell me the length of JH blank and the length of JF blank this is an amazingly easy problem probably somewhat insulting to your intelligence okay HG is a length of three so we come over here and JF also has to have a length of three there we go FG has a length of five so we go up here JH must also have a length of five there we go it's that easy so when you have a parallelogram opposite sides are congruent do you see that opposite sides are congruent and that's theorem let's go back a page that's theorem 6 2 now let's jump on to theorem 6 3 
Again, whenever you need to pause the video, that's fine. Go ahead and copy this in your notes, please. Here it is. Wow, that was nice, wasn't it? Here we go. Theorem 6.3. If you have a quadrilateral that's a parallelogram, in other words, let's just cut cut it down just the basics, you have a parallelogram. So if you have a parallelogram, that's the if part, if you have a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. You might say, Mr. Earhart, what's opposite angles? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Let's talk about that for just a second, okay? Here's our parallelogram. So by now, you're probably still copying down the theorem, and that's fine. If you need to pause the video, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine also. But I do think you should put this in your notes unless you totally understand this. That's fine. But I'm still going to give you a picture of this so you know what's going on. I'm going to take no chances with that, okay? All right, here's your parallelogram. Notice we have our parallel sides. Let's say this angle right here is, eh, it looks like it's about 50 degrees. Well, if that's 50 degrees, then guess what we have right over here? Yep, you guessed it. 50 degrees. And this down here looks like it's about 130. So if that's 130, go up here. And that's also going to be 130. Do you guys see it okay? I hope so. These two angles here, diagonally across, they're called opposite angles, are going to be congruent as long as you have a what? A parallelogram. And these two angles here are going to be congruent. Okay, that's another character trait of a parallelogram. So, so far we've learned that opposite sides are congruent. Now we're learning that opposite angles are congruent. Okay, opposite angles are congruent. Remember, you cannot speed me up, but you can slow me down by pausing the video. So, I'm going to move on. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause it. Okay, let's take a look at another theorem. All right, and this is going to be theorem, uh, let's see. Theorem 6-4. Theorem 6-4. All right, Theorem 6-4. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, let's look at the if part. If we have a what? Parallel parallelogram. Now let's look at the then part. Then consecutive angles supplementary. So you must have a parallelogram and then um, you will have supplementary angles All right, that are consecutive angles. All right, let's real quick take this. I'm going to come right back to that in just a second, so please be patient with me. All right. All right. Go ahead and finish copying down this Def this theorem if you've not done that yet. Theorem 6-4, if you have a quad parallelogram, then consecutive angles are supplementary. And here's what that means. Are you ready? Do you remember what opposite angles were? Please watch carefully, students. Opposite angles would be this angle and this angle. And I'm going to go back a page. What did we just learn about opposite angles? They are what? Congruent. Okay? Now we're talking about consecutive angles. So what are consecutive angles? Well, consecutive angles would be this right here, this angle here, and this angle here. Do you see how they're side by side? We call them consecutive angles, okay? Or, or this angle here and this angle here, are they not side by side? They would be consecutive angles. All right, so I'm just going to put some dots. Just take my pencil point. So this angle right here and this angle right here are consecutive angles. This angle right here and this angle over here are consecutive angles. This angle here and this angle here are consecutive angles. And this angle here and this angle here are consecutive angles. And what do we know about consecutive angles? When we have a parallelogram, they are not congruent. No, they are not. They are supplementary. Supplementary. Okay, so... That means, let's just pick a number here, we'll say this is 50, no, we'll say this is 45. Then what would this angle right here have to be? Remember, they have to add up to 180. Does everybody remember what supplementary means? Supplementary means their sum equals 180. That's what supplementary means, okay? Remember what complementary means? Complementary means 
their sum equals 90 degrees. Okay, so remember all that's very important that you know that. But back to what we're saying here, um, if this is 45, then this right here would have to be what? This would have to be 135, all right, to give us 180. Okay, so now if this angle here is 135, what did we just learn about opposite angles a second ago? Well, they're congruent, so that's got to be 135. And if that's 45, then this over here has to be 45. So are you not seeing what I'm trying to show you here? There's a reason I did not give you a problem to work. Let's go back a page. Let's go way back to Theorem 6.2. We looked at Theorem 6.2, and then I gave you a problem to work right here. But then I gave you Theorem 6.3. I gave you an example of it. Then I jumped to Theorem 6.4, and I didn't give you a problem to work on. Here's why. We're going to tie these two theorems together and look at a problem. Okay, now, now watch this. Are you not seeing what's happening here? Okay, now I'm not sure how well you can see this on the screen. There's a little bit of a glare from... Uh, when I copied this from the book. Um, I'm not sure that's going to help. It's a 70. I'll just go ahead and tell you now it's a 70. So this is 70 degrees. I would encourage you to put this problem in your book. I really would. If you just want to watch, that's up to you. Do you realize because of those last two theorems, I can now give you, I can find any three angles in a, in a parallelogram as long as you give me just one angle. You give me any angle, I don't care what angle it is, and I can tell you the other three angles. And you're like, really, Mr. Earhart? Yeah. Theorem 6.3 stated opposite angles are congruent. So if this is 70, this has to be what over here? 70. Now, you just learned that consecutive angles are supplementary. So what angle, put a question mark, what angle would I have to put here so that when I, when I added these two angles together, I got 180? Well, obviously, it's going to have to be 110 degrees. Do you see that? You would take 180 and subtract out the 70, and you're left with 110. So if this is 110, and that's right, because 110 plus 70 is 180. If this is 110, we know opposite angles are congruent, so this has to be 110. This is really, really cool, okay? So those two theorems, excuse me, sorry about that. These two theorems really tie in well together. Opposite angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles I'm sorry, I said that wrong, and I apologize. Opposite angles are congruent. Sorry about that, congruent. And then supplementary angles, or um, consecutive angles, are supplementary. They are supplementary. So for one bonus point, I think this is really, really simple. For one bonus point, I want you to go ahead and find the three missing angles in that um, diagram right there. All right, so go ahead and find the three missing angles for one bonus point. I'm going to wait just a second while you do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write in the angle, uh, the measurement for angle C, which is across from angle A. You should have got this right here. And then I'm going to write in the angle measurement for D. You should have got this right here because those two add up to 180. And then if this is what D equals go across to B, B would also be this. Are you starting to figure this out? It's pretty simple, isn't it? So let's review very quickly. If you have a parallelogram, we know opposite sides are congruent. So if this was a 5 right here, then this would have to be a 5 right here. If this side was 8 over here, this would have to be an 8. Opposite angles are congruent, and consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay? So we're doing pretty well. All right, let's continue on. Okay, now this is interesting, so please really watch carefully here, okay? This is the last theorem we're going to look at today. It can be a little confusing if you don't pay attention. 
if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. Now I'm going to explain this to you in a second and teach it to you, okay? But again, like always, let's look at our if part. If we have a what? Parallelogram, then what happens? Diagonals bisect, okay? If we have a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and let's take a look. Let's take a, a look at this, a picture real quick. So here we go. Let's draw our parallelogram. Here we go. And I think it's always good to put the parallel symbol so we know that. So we have a parallelogram. And now please watch what I do next, students. Watch this so carefully in your notes. Um, let's use some red lines here. In your notes, go ahead and draw some diagonals. This is very important you do this, okay? Please do this carefully and watch. Watch, watch, and listen, okay? We're going to give these letters, these vertices, some letters. So write these letters down. Now, uh, please watch this carefully. Do you see the segment A, E? Do you see that? Well, that segment, I'm going to put a little slash mark, is congruent to this segment here. Put one slash here. That's what that theorem is saying. But guess what, students? That's not the only thing that theorem is saying. Here's what else it's saying. Please watch this. Do you see the segment that runs from D to E right here? Put two slashes. Well, that's congruent to the segment that runs from E to B. So we'll put two slashes there. Do you see it okay? That's what this theorem is saying. Now, again, if you got to pause it and back it up, do that. I move on, okay? So basically, here's what it's saying. If I told you this length right here was 6 from here to here, let's say that's AB. What if I asked you for the length of all of AB? Well, the length, let's put a C right here. What if I asked you for the length of CB? Well, the length of CB from here to here would be the same as this, so it would be 6. What if I asked you to find the length of AB, the entire thing? Well, wouldn't that be 12? What if I put a 7 right here? Do you all see that? And let's call this D and we'll call this H. What would the length of CH be? Do you see that? CH, wouldn't that be a length of 7? And then what's the length of DH? The length of DH would be 14. That is what this theorem is saying. If you have a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. In other words, they cut each other in half. All right? So not to do an overkill, but I'm going to finish up with some quick slashes. So this segment's congruent to this segment, and this segment's congruent to that segment. I hope that helps, and that is um, what this theorem is saying. And by the way, I want to show you something real quick I think you need to see. You know, we've talked about opposite angles congruent and all of that. Don't forget that you you would also know right off the bat that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. How do you know that, Mr. Earhart? Remember when two lines intersect, their vertical angles are congruent? We've talked about that. So you could also say this angle here is congruent to this angle here because two lines are intersecting. Just something to think about, and you're going to use that in your homework um, a little later. Okay, I did, t I did tell you I was going to teach for a long time today, so please understand that and don't be discouraged. So back up whatever you need to. We're not done yet, but I'm just saying make sure you're getting this. We've looked at one definition and four theorems. Now, I would encourage you to take some notes on the next stuff I'm going to give you. I'm going to very quickly now go over what we just talked about and then uh, maybe do a couple problems. So here we go. Hold on one.
one second. All right. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pause this for a second. Hold on, students. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for your patience. All right, let's review real, real quick. Please write this down. Okay, let's review. A little humor there. Yeehaw. Let's have fun. All right, let's review. Here we go. Characteristics, characteristics of parallelograms. Please write this down. I'm going to very kindly and very nicely summarize everything we just learned in five quick comments. I think this would be great for your notes. Characteristics of par parallelograms. What's the first characteristic? Opposite sides are parallel. That's the definition. So we know that if you have a parallelogram, if you have a parallelogram, that's not, it's close enough, I guess. If you have a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. So this side's parallel to this side, and this side's parallel to that side. Okay? That's one character trait you should know. Wow, not good. That's one character trait you should know right there. Opposite sides are parallel. Okay? All right, what's the next character trait you should know? Opposite sides are, look at this, congruent, 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 okay? So if you have a parallelogram, you don't have to write all these diagrams down. I'm just trying to show you. I just want you to write these words for the most part. If this is a length of 10, then we know this side right over here is a length of 10. If this, if this is a length of 12, what's the length down here? 12, okay? All right, so opposite sides are congruent. Number three, opposite angles are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so we have a parallelogram. And you know right away, this angle here is congruent to this angle here. And you know this angle here is congruent to this angle here. So that's characteristic number three. We know the opposite sides are parallel in a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent in a parallelogram, and opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. All right? All right, let's take a look at characteristic number four. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Get a little bit of a different look there on our parallelogram. All right, now, let's say this angle here is 100 then what do we know this angle right here has to be? 80. That's what this is saying. Consecutive angles are supplementary. And by the way, if that's 80, then we know this has to be 80. Then we know this has to be 100. Look at this. 100 plus 80 is 180. Or look at this. 80 plus 100 is 180. Or look at this. 80 plus 100 is 180. Or look at this. 80 plus 100 is 180. Any consecutive angles, that means two angles side by side, any consecutive angles are going to be supplementary in a parallelogram. So opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and then characteristic number five, and I think this is the most difficult one for students to remember, and that is that diagonals bisect, okay? Diagonals bisect each other. Now, I'm not going to use the line drawer, so I'm just going to kind of sketch it here a little bit. I'm not going to try to be that perfect, but there's a there's a diagonal, and here's a diagonal. All right, and then I'm going to use black lines. This segment here with one slash is congruent to this segment here, and this segment here is congruent to that segment there okay and that's what we're looking at um, in that last theorem diagonals bisect each other okay now um, I'm not sure how much time you've had to pause how many times you have had to pause this and um, and go back and all that's so hard as a teacher to do these videos and make sure they're a proper length Okay, that's really difficult to do. Um, but we have covered five characteristics of parallelograms. I'm going to throw your homework up here now. I'm telling you, 
if you have time to work on it that's fine but it's not due until Friday this is what you're going to do right here tomorrow in class okay and I will have a video for you to watch in class working all of these problems out lucky me I get to make that for you so page 313 4 through 33 that's exactly 30 problems you did hear correctly but students I'm telling you right now it's a very reasonable first of all you have probably a little bit of class time today if you want to work on something else and Mr. Harmon doesn't mind that's fine you'll have all class pe class period tomorrow to work on this and it's due on Friday this is due Friday okay so there's the assignment and look what I've put look what I have put with it there's the name of the video right there that video will work all the problems out and help you at home now it won't be done until tomorrow night um, because you're not going to get this you're not going to work on this until class on Thursday for the most part um, so do understand that but um, there it is I hope you guys have a great day wish I could be there to see you um, on Friday I'll be there to give you your wonderful blessed awesome quiz and then we'll cover a small lesson on Friday all right call or email I don't do this every day but I give it to you every now and then call or email if you have questions okay don't ever hesitate to do that all right have a good day